when is it time to rebuild? If you look at your look at your record, um, <laughs> look at the how many points that you have, points against, and stuff like that, and and just go for it from there. You gotta literally look through every ramification of how your league is going and how your team is going, and and work and work from there. Okay, then let me ask you this: How can you differentiate between a rebuild and a retool? You know, because most NFL franchises, they never really say they're rebuilding. They say they're retooling. Right. But no, what I mean by that is, okay, so let's say you're two and five. Right. But you're second in points mm-hmm. or third in points because you've seen this happen. You're super high. You're just getting clobbered every week. You've had some untimely injuries. You know, so that might be one of those things where we're not talking a full rebuild. You know, you're not just shipping off, you know, good players that are in their mid twenties for picks. We're talking, you know, you just, you just need to make a few tweaks. So how mm. is that one of the ways that you would differentiate between that, a retool yeah. and a rebuild? Yeah. Cause I, in, in that case, you could be two and five. Like in my case right now, I have uh, Christian McCaffrey and Chris Carson on IR. They should be coming back in and however much time you, at that point, you don't need to retool because if you believe those players are going to come back and produce for you, you can have somebody else on your bench. You can trade for, like like we were talking about Cordero Pass or Miles Gaskin to hold you over for a little bit of time. And then after that, when those players come back, you can trade those players that you traded for for something else and make your team a super team at that point. You just have to find a way to rework it. So a retooling for me is just, you know, patience. Some people don't have it because they just want to say, oh, my team is bad. I'll just sell everybody and don't care what value you get. You still have to get some sort of value for your team in the retooling. Yeah, I think it's also time to rebuild when you see yourself in the middle and you know you're not a top four team in your league. I think that's exactly when mm-hmm. you know, hey, maybe I need to retool my team. Maybe it's time to rebuild a little bit. Maybe when you're done rebuilding, the teams that are ahead of you are going to be out of their out of their contender state. So, Chev, let's say you're one and six, oh and seven. You know, and yes, I do have some teams with those records, everybody. Thank you. Asking. When you decide to rebuild, how do you proceed? You know, what do you start just stockpiling picks? Are you looking to get whenever you trade somebody, do you look to get pick and player? What's your process? I think for me, when I'm selling off players, I'm trying to sell away those veteran guys that maybe have a couple more years left, but they hold a lot of value for contending teams. Uh, those teams are looking for players that are consistent and somebody that they know they can trust. And if those guys have younger players on that team and they're also willing to give picks, I want both. Mm -hmm. I don't want just picks. That's not going to help your team in the future unless you're getting an egregious amount of picks, which doesn't happen very much. Because, I mean, we've all went in the drafts. I'm sure we've all drafted people that are not very good now. I drafted Darius Geis. I drafted uh, Mm -hmm. Garrett Price got me with the old J-Jaw. So... (laughs) Uh, <laughs> Alexander Madison. Old with, with Alexander Madison and Stanley Morgan Jr. too. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you, you're not always going to draft the greatest. I tried to tell my dad that today, and he just said, blah, blah, blah. So, not exactly <laughs> sure how he took that. But you, you're not always going to draft those players that are going to be studs. And they're not always mm-hmm. going to be Justin Jefferson's that ex- excel your team as fast as they can. Jamar Chase, I mean, that, if you have that guy on your team right now, he has excelled your rebuilding stage faster than you can mm-hmm. even imagine. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not I'm not looking just for picks. I would like players and picks, and you're not trying to get old veterans either. But you can also mm-hmm. get players that are veterans that are maybe struggling, but they also have an opportunity to move to a different team. Chris Godwin, probably a good one. Allen Robinson, I mean, Chris Godwin's probably going to be a little higher than expected or more than Allen Robinson, but – He's a guy that's possibly moving to a different team as well to possibly become a number one target. And he's doing great things at Tampa Bay right now. So if he goes back there, great. He's a, he's had the time to play with Tom Brady. So Chev, are you, are there certain positions that you like to build around? For me, if I'm build if I'm rebuilding, I'm gonna rebuild around wide receivers. But do you yeah, do the I, same thing or do you like to get like a stud quarterback? I mean, obviously it depends on the type of league it is. Yeah, so I think when you're making these trades. I would try to get younger wide receivers. The best time to get those running backs is in the draft, in my opinion. That's the lowest value that they're probably going to have, and it's the best chance you're going to have to get them, especially if you are rebuilding, for real, for real. You're going to have the one through three pick, and usually there's a good amount of players that are coming off the board that you will need to get at running back position. I think the wide receiver position, though, is if you can lock that down, 
even tight end, like if you were able to get Kyle Pitts this last year, that's great. You don't have to look for another tight end for hopefully 15 yeah. years. And yeah. <laughs> we've seen how valuable those people are in these leagues. I, I win leagues, and it's mostly because I have good tight ends. Do you guys see that in your guys' leagues? Is a tight end that valuable for your team to win? I would say so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And the, to take that next the, step where you're actually one of the top teams. You need yeah. a top tier. Mm-hmm. And the piggyback yeah. off of what Shevin says, too, with the trading for picks and players, usually if I trade a, a top veteran for another player <clears throat> and a pick, I continually try to flip some players to get more picks for later uh, round drafts, too. So you can keep stockpiling picks if you're in that rebuilding stage. Because my, my one league, I have 2020. I got like four or five first round 2023 first. I just kept flipping them and flipping them. So once that time comes around, you if you're you know ready to take that next step, you can trade those first for proven vets or if it's a rookie that you really like in that draft plan. You could get throwing players too. Like Khalil Herbert could have been a guy you got thrown into the mm-hmm. deal. Like exactly. you, you want those lottery. You yeah, those lottery guys that if they hit, great. And if, if they don't hit, see you later. They were just a throw in anyway. Yeah, yeah, a guy, you know, guys that I look forward to are guys that had former high draft capital in the real NFL draft that aren't doing anything right now, like mm-hmm. um, Ronald Jones, Jalen Rager. You know, these are guys that are still maybe a change of scenery, or you know, there could be different players around them. Leonard Fournette gets hurt, stuff like that. That would help these guys really show out. When you are looking for trade partners, what should you consider? Yeah, so I know our first thought is always to be, well, I'm a rebuilding team. I'm going to go after the contender. You know, they're going to pay up for the veteran. You know, they're going to they'll throw away a second for, you know, a wide receiver three. They'll give a first for an RB2 maybe. You know, that's what you're trying to hit, right? That's our first thought. That's what we all do. You can trade with other teams. It's okay. Like, it doesn't have to just be the championship contenders. You can trade with other rebuilding teams. You know, I understand you guys have similar ones, so it can be hard. But if you know your league mates, you can actually get an advantage there. So one thing you have to realize when you're rebuilding a team is what's your play style. You know, when you start a career in Madden, you're like, oh, I'm the the guy with the extra bonuses for XP. I'm the guy with the extra bonuses for trading. I'm the guy with the extra bonuses for scouting. Okay. What guy are you with your dynasty team? Are you someone who wheels and deals? Do you make trades all the time? then yes, go buy the veterans off a rebuilding team for cheap and then flip them next year when they're worth the first, you know, because they're at their peak. You know, I I would love to say like a guy like J.K. Dobbins. I know he's he's not really a rebuilding piece anymore. He's going to his third year as a running back next year when he comes back. He's coming back from injury. Not a guy necessarily you want to rebuild around. You might, but, you know, everyone might not feel comfortable. They might rather have a first round pick this year uh, and grab like, you know, Isaiah Spiller or Brees Hall, one of the new guys coming up. But maybe if you spend a first for J.K. Dobbins and he takes off next year, we've seen guys play well six, seven years into their career as a running back. We see, I mean, for all we know, J.K. Dobbins could be, you know, at the level of like a top 10 running back. Yeah, I was going to say Dalvin Cook, you know, coming off the injury and, you know, having a productive career after that. If he becomes the next Dalvin Cook, he's worth a lot more than just one first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're comfortable with trading, you can trade with any team in the league. But if you struggle to trade, and you got to be honest with yourself, how often do you trade? And sometimes it's just because you're not trying. Sometimes because you just you can never seem to negotiate something you're happy with. You know, if you're emotional about your players and you just want to value them how you value them, not how someone else values them, it's hard to trade. So if you don't trade a lot, and you kind of rely on draft picks and and you know scouting and trying to get new guys, and then you're throwing your team, you just got to see them develop. If that's how you go about it. Then you just gotta trade for picks. I mean, you maybe you trade a guy like Jamar Chase. Okay. You're like, wait, why would you trade a guy like Jamar Chase on a rebuilding team? Well, someone has him as his wide the dynasty wide receiver one right now. And you can, I don't know, say you can get DK Metcalf in a second for Jamar Chase. That's actually pretty good because you get somewhat of a sim- similar talent, DK Metcalf, you know, top five, yeah. top ten dynasty wide receiver, depending on who you ask, and a yeah. second. It's pretty much a lateral move, for DK Metcalf and Jamar Chase, but you get a second, which on a rebuilding team, you need all the help you can get. You need depth. That second's worth a pretty good amount once the draft rolls around. People pay up for names. They pay, they pay up for the guys who are hot right now. And just because Jamar Chase is a rookie doesn't mean you can't trade him. I mean, yeah, say you true. can get CD Lamb in a second, Ooh. AJ Brown in a second. I mean, those are still good moves and you're creating better depth. 
And you look at the points. Yeah, Jamar Chase is fun. He's exciting. He's the newest guy to do it. And you're like, oh, well, you know, the ceiling is unlimited now because he's a rookie doing this. From a fantasy standpoint, he's really not all that different than Justin Jefferson or CeeDee Lamb or DK Metcalf or AJ Brown. They're all about the same. I could even throw Calvin Ridley in there as long as that team's healthy. Depending on the dynasty wide receiver, you know, rankings in your head, it's more just a big tier at the top. Look at those valuations and look in tiers. And if you can just drop down a little bit in that tier, but stay in that tier and then add another piece, that's building your team right there. You don't not build you don't build a starting lineup when you're trying to rebuild. You build a team. 